Hey everyone, it is Sean here, and welcome to our first ever special on Dinner with Racers. Uh, if you are listening in chronological order, you've just heard uh, Jeff Brown speak about a number of projects he was involved in, a number of great stories. One thing that was conspicuously missing, however, was any stories about Level 5, which was a racing team he worked with for, for several years. Uh, and that is because he had a handful of stories that were so amazing, we decided to pull those out and put them in their own special. So, if you don't know the history and the story of Level 5 Motorsports, uh, we're not really going to get into it in, in this series. Um, we're more interested in some of the projects that they worked on. If you want to know more about Level 5, I uh, definitely recommend you look them up to just sort of understand the variety of stories that led into the formation of the team and the people behind it. Uh, but, for our sakes, we're going to get into some of the crazy projects that they got involved in. Most notably, uh, the first 40 minutes is dominated by their D-Sports Racer program. Now, if you don't know what a D-Sports Racer is, uh, that is a division of the Sports Car Club of America, the SCCA, and a category that's sort of meant for the, the garage racer, if you will, the sort of person that's doing it as sort of a fun hobby. Uh, but having never raced SCCA myself... I don't think it's fair for me to get into it. So we decided to call a good friend of ours, Andrew Davis, who just won the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge GS category championship. Uh, and we decided to uh, have kind of Andrew explain what D-Sports Racers were all about. So here's a quick call with Andrew. Hello. Andrew Davis. Hey, John Heckman. How was the good life? Oh, the good life is good. How about yourself? I'm going to just lie and say everything's awesome. <laughs> there you go. That's the same thing I'm doing. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> so all right. Let's let's talk some uh, some SCCA if you got a minute here. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. All right. So, basically, we're we're about to sort of play this uh, uh, this level five special uh, that uh, that features stories from Jeff Braun on on all things that they did. Um, but the the predominant story is this ridiculous D Sports Racer program that they did in 2012. Sure. So most people know you as sort of a guy who does a ton of racing in IMSA between uh, Continental Tire Sports Car Championship, and hopefully we'll see you back in, in the WeatherTech Series next year. Uh, but you do a ton of coaching in SCCA right now, but you also came up from SCCA, didn't you? I did, indeed. That's where I cut my teeth. At that time, when I was at that age, uh, SCCA was the spot, you know, and the, the national runoffs were, were always the goal for young drivers to come up and you know, put their stamp on, on hopefully a, a blooming career. So, yeah, SCCA is, is certainly very dear to me since I've been very young because my father raced. Uh, great fond memories, but a lot of support and, and love for the SCCA. Right. Okay, so tell me about uh, what the runoffs are, but more importantly, tell me about the D-Sports racer category within it. Yeah, sure. Well, the runoffs, you know, what, what was it, what's unique about the runoffs is that it's a winner-take-all race, and that determines the national champion each year. So you'll drive, you know, through the season, and, and uh, depending on budgets, you know, you'll you'll do the minimum amount of requirements uh, necessary, or sometimes some drivers, you know, have have bigger bigger budgets and do lots of races to qualify for the runoffs. And you can win your points championships in your in your division, um, and then uh, still you can come into that race as your points champion, and uh, you know you don't perform in that one winner take all, and and you're not going to win. Where somebody that maybe was last in their division but still qualified can take the championship. One of my favorite classes has always been the D Sports Racer and the sports racers in general. Um, I started uh, SCCA in a Sports 2000, uh, which is now a defunct class in the SCCA, but uh, it put me out on the track with the D Sports Racers and the C Sports Racers and and some other Formula cars as well. So so I, I'm I'm quite uh, well versed with all sports racers um, in those categories. But basically, this is meant to be a category for people who let's just say don't have an IMSA budget, people who just sort of can can race with what they've got. Uh, and it's sort of a high downforce, uh, fairly affordable category. Is that correct? Sports racers are, are basically your, your mini prototypes, right? They're, uh, you know, just taking a, a look at a car, you can see where, it, you know, its roots uh, are, are formed from, you know, your traditional uh, prototype cars that race at Le Mans and, and beyond, you know, rear engine, uh, very swoopy bodywork, which is designed for aerodynamic effect, uh, very lightweight, 
and low powered normally, but high grip. Right. But the folks running it are, they are not necessarily big IMPS teams with big budgets running out professionally. Who are the kind of folks that are out there running normally? One of the beautiful things and the things I always liked as a child about these sports racers, it's a very unique class in that it, uh, it's not a catch-all class necessarily, but it kind of is. There's several different there's, – there's enormous amounts of chassis. I remember uh, uh, Decker, uh, the Beasleys ran the Decker chassis, and uh, there was a Tracer chassis. And some of these that were uh, – you know, the guys that had a little higher budget, you could tell, would run up front. But at the same time, filling the field would be one-off cars where – you know, somebody was, was building this car from maybe a, a Sports 2000 chassis or, or a homemade chassis, you know, putting a, a motorcycle base type engine in them sometimes and, and building it in their garage. You know, these might be trans, transported to the track on an open trailer with a, with a team consisting of, you know, your, your best buddy and, and uh, your, your, your kids. That's certainly the way, uh, the way my father raced. You know, I was, I was a crew member, even though I was only five or six and my, my mom and my, my brother and my dad and I were the team, you know. Right. So basically the, the people who are running are usually they're buying a chassis from somewhere, maybe doing something in their garage, but no one's doing any crazy development. No, of course not. You know, these guys were, were just doing this stuff on the seat of the pants feel and, and, and also just on, trial and error you know these cars would return year after year and each each year you'd see there there'd be a new little arrow bit on there or uh, you know a new nose that they had created for for uh, downforce or, or whatnot so yeah a lot of just i don't want to say low budget because there, there was money being spent but you know not not anything that uh, even compares to uh you know how some of the, the newer the newer sports racers are, are becoming more expensive as they've moved to carbon tubs and stuff like that for some of the cars but it's still a class that you can come in there and run at a minimal budget and be competitive and have a shot normally at the, uh, at the national runoffs and then becoming a champion. Perfect. All right. So going back to 2012, when uh, level five showed up, um, you and I were talking about this a couple of days ago, but you know, more or less, it seemed like it was the top guys were probably spending less than six figures to even get out there. Um, do you remember that time at all? Yeah, I do. I, I remember that, that uh, particular program that you guys are, are highlighting for sure. And, uh, yeah, I would say uh, even with the, the cars, you know, stepping up to those carbon tubs, but still you're looking at under six-figure budgets to, uh, to qualify for the runoffs and, uh, and make it and, and have a good go. And that includes the car, by the way. Cool. All right. I think that sets the stage pretty well. We gonna, uh, we going to see you around next year? Uh, yeah, I hope so. You'll definitely see me around next year. I'm working on all that stuff and, uh, you know, always playing the off-season game of, uh, of trying to get myself out there so I can continue to showcase what I do and, help teams, uh, you know, get results. So, uh, yeah, I'm not done yet for sure. So I'll be out there. Cool. All right. Well, congratulations, by the way, on the uh, GS championship. And hopefully we'll see you in, in 2016. Great. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it was a great year for us for sure. Thanks so much, Sean. I appreciate it. All right, man. I'll see you later. All right. See ya. All right, thanks. All right. So without any further ado, the Level 5 Special. Enjoy. Meow. Meow. All right. We're going to start in 5, 4, 3, 2. But, so, but your argument is that the tools have become so good that the old days is like, let's build it build it up and kind of see what we got, and then we'll do some track testing or whatever arrow we can get. Now right. you can, you can, it's so easy to design a, a car and kind of get a concept for what it's going to do and how to get there before you've ever put it on track, that, that now it's, it's a lot easier to get to the solution than it used to be yes. in terms of speed and efficiency. Let me give you, uh, you want a story about that? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> so, Anything can be a story. Okay. Yeah. So level five, one of the projects we did at level five was build a D-Sports racer. This was the car that was like built to go win the runoffs. Run yeah, run that's, right. A, that's an right. An SCCA race. We've got a custom program. Right. Yeah. To win the SCCA <laughs> runoffs. And Scott Tucker wanted to, th the real goal was sure. they were holding the runoffs at Road America in the, then. Yeah. And no SCCA club racing car had ever broken two minutes at Road America. The D sports racers of the, that era, this was 2012, wasn't that long ago. Yeah. We're running 201, high 201s, 202s. So just within grass. Just there. Yeah. The Atlantic yeah. cars were 202s, 203s. Sea Sports Racer were about that same area. And it was a big thing. And SCCA, maybe the Chicago region, somebody came out and said, we're going to give away, I don't know. It might have just been a plaque, but something <laughs> for the first guy that's going to go under two minutes. $1,000. Right. Here's right. a gift certificate to Wendy's. Right. 
It, it was probably something like that. It yeah. didn't matter. Scott Tucker says, let's go this. do that. I need that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> let's go do that. I love Wendy's. <laughs> right. So we said. I can get a free night at a Ramada. Right. <laughs> so we said, well, you know, I was the head technical guy. We were running yeah. LMP2 cars. We were running Porsche Cup. We were running Ferrari Challenge. We were running uh, IMSA Lights. Yeah. And so why not? Right. Also go D sports racing, racing. Yeah, sure. Why not add it in there? <laughs> so we so we took the car. Basically, took it to took the basic car, the basic D sports racer we had with the motorcycle engine. Was in it. a store? Is a West. Okay, West. Yep. We went to. We we had a real strong. Uh, technical, working relationship with Multimatic, a uh, Canadian company who does a, who building the Ford GT. By yeah, the way, yeah, yeah. so. Multimatic was working with us on our vehicle dynamics and simulation program for our LMP2 cars. For your and, and your <coughs> D Sports racer. <laughs> so the D Sports racer <laughs> program overwhelmed the I wonder why. The, 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 real, the real program. Right, yeah. right. I mean, yeah. I would say 80% of my time and Multimatic's time that year in 2012 was spent on the D Sports racer program and 20% <laughs> on the LMP2 cars. <laughs> so. We took this. Oh, we took God, this west. Why? We went to the wind shear wind tunnel for two days. Right. That's a hundred grand. There you get, yeah. Yeah. yeah well, sure. just yeah, the, no, no. Just and the baseline. What yeah, our, what the yeah. car? What the current car was? Two day wind tunnel. We went to the K and C <laughs> rig. We went to the shaker rig for two days each. We went to the swing test where we could get moments of inertia and all that stuff on the car. <laughs> we went testing with the car. And built a simulation model <clears throat> of the car so we could run it in the simulator. Yeah. Multimatic has a driver in the loop simulator, which is like, for the people that don't know, it's like an iRacing simulator, yeah. but it's it's a flight simulator yeah. okay. for race cars. Right. right. It's about a $5 million machine okay. that moves the driver yeah, it's got just the like he's moving. Built in and, yeah. and it gives, the driver drives it, and it feels very, very close to the real car. Okay. And the data output you get when he drives a lap is your it's sort of like a MoTeC data trace. Yeah, sure. Throttle brake. Then you can type on in your computer, change the wing angle on your computer, and he drives another lap. And you can overlay the data. And, right, right. And For so, a D-Sports racer. Right. So we built the <laughs> model. <laughs> just, just making sure we're still right. on the same page on this. We so. spent maybe a quarter million dollars to build the m computer model, <laughs> computer simulation model of the D-Sports <laughs> racer. That was the current car. I'm not laughing at you. I'm no, no, no. This was the... One of the coolest projects I've ever been involved in. Yeah, no. For it's the runoffs. For, it, for, for the runoffs. For the SCC 13, runoffs. 13 laps at Road America. In a D-Sports yeah. race. In 2012. 12. 12. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so then we got the model built, and then we said, okay, now we need, that. that's a car that goes 202. 202 is not going to cut it. Enough. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. how do we make it better? So the engine guys started on their engine program. You could run normally aspirated 1,000cc bike motors. And a good one could put out 200 horsepower. That was about as all you could get out of one of those. Okay. We thought, okay, so we started our program with that in mind because we could go buy those. So we bought two from the two best engine builders at the time and just put those on the shelf. If all else fails, we can well, we pull those. Yeah. Right. right. So those sat there for six months. Our engine department, we hired, we had a really good guy in the shop at level five who built motors. And then we got some of the best tuners this guy Shane Tecklenburg who's like nobody's ever heard of him but yeah. he's like magic when it comes to tuning motors people sure. call him up from all over the world to come and tune their motors I mean he flies to Dubai he flies I mean does he specialize in motorcycles or anything no, anything okay. especially if they're turbocharged okay, okay. Huh. especially if they're turbocharged so does he work with you on the Mazda program no <laughs> no no but <laughs> Only D sports. He races. could though. If it would have gone further, he would yeah. be there. Right, right. <laughs> he only does D sports racers. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's, that's, he's that's, the D sports racer he's, guru. He's, that's what he does. He was that year. Right. <laughs> so we got. So you could run thousand cc normally aspirated, or you could run the rule said six hundred and seventy cc. I don't know how that was picked. Turbocharged motors. Okay. So we yeah. looked through the rules. So and here's the yeah. And here's we're like flaw. Turbocharged six hundred and seventy cc's. I don't know why you would do that. Well, we started investigating. We got Shane in on the deal. Shane, wh what do you think about a 670 turbo motor? And he's like, yeah. What do you think we could make for horsepower? Hmm, I don't know. Conservatively, 300. <laughs> like 300 horsepower? 
It's like, yeah, I think we could do that. What is what is six seventy plus a turbo actually equal out in CCs? Yeah, I don't know. You know, yeah, like that's the question, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. big. Because there were no boost limits, there were no restrictor <laughs> size. Yep. There were no restrictor sizes. I mean, there were none of that. Oh, say no more. I mean, right. you've come this far, so <laughs> right. And the reason nobody had done it is because that would be expensive. These are club racers. These are like a guy and his wife who They're guys who can run d sports racers. Right, yeah. with a motorcycle right. engine in it, do yeah. it five times a year, qualify the runoffs, yeah. take their two weeks of vacation that they have, right. and go to the runoffs with them and their wife and yep. their and their cardboard shoe box with their tools and their duct yep. tape in it right. and go. Not and I'm not complete. That's what... Not a lot of time for the wind tunnel with that schedule. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> it's, yeah exactly. Right. And, they're, and that's what SECA racing should did, be. Did their CFD run on Windows 95? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an app on your iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, <laughs> so we start Close looking at this mind. thing. The short story on the motor is 675 Turbo was going to be the way to go. Sure. We started developing that with Shane. Ultimate end of the process after exploding many sure. and working on some stuff, it would make 350. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How heavy is this car? Well, so oh, it's... It starts with a well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 50 pounds. It's 1,100 pounds with the driver in it. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. That is... <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the driver... The test driver was Colin. Yeah, yeah, of course. We got Colin because he had been, he had been doing all of uh, when Scott Tucker did the IMSA lights. Colin would drive his IMSA lights car sure. on the promoters' day, That's set right. it up for him, yeah, I remember and that. then Tucker would go. drive it because yeah. Scott didn't want to be bothered with setting the car up. Oh, why just would you? Wanted yeah. a fast one and sure. get yeah, in yeah, it and yeah. go. Yeah. So Colin was the test driver there. We got him on this on this program. So we did the first thing we looked at was the body work. We had the car up at Multimatic. We laser scanned the whole body. So we had a computer picture of the body. Then we put that in CFD, and we ran 22 days with 44 computers running CFD for 22 straight days <laughs> of computing power. So I, I just want to confirm this. Yeah. For a D sports racer <laughs> to win the runoffs. Yes. <laughs> yes. To win the SEC. To win a runoffs. medal. A 13 yeah. race. 13, 13 lap, lap race. race. 13. 13 lap race. Right. 44 computers. Right. Yeah. CFD, 22 days worth of CFD. And a guy that a lot of people heard of, our head aerodynamicist was Mark Hanford. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hanford Familiar. device, which sure. he claims is the worst thing to ever be associated with because it slowed race cars down. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <And then. laughs> but Han Mark Hanford is about as good as it gets from an aerodynamic Why not standpoint. just bring in Adrian Newey? Um, He's busy. He might yeah. be busy doing something yeah. else. Okay. Conflicts. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we got, so we did the whole CFD thing. Figured out the body work we wanted. Then we worked on the suspension. S we ended up using Multimatic, which owns dynamic suspension. Mm -hmm. Does a lot of Formula One dampers yeah. for unnamed world sure. championship level teams sponsored by a sugary energy drink. It's November 18th by the time people are hearing this, so we don't even know if they'll still be there. Right, they might <laughs> not. But at the time... <laughs> Them and some other guys. So anyway, we ended up with Formula One shocks on the car. Sure. We ended up with, um, we, we started out, we came up with four different sus potential suspension designs and about three different potential aerodynamic designs. So, so in the old days, <laughs> you would go and build all of those. Right. Well, you couldn't afford to. You'd, you just have to guess. And you'd build one and that's what you have. Yeah. Well, usually you have a budget to run D-Sports racers. Right. Right. So so what we did is we had the simulation model. We went to Multimatic and with Colin yeah. for about three days. Me and him and the Multimatic engineers sat there, and we started out with design number one, suspension one with body one, with engine one. Right. And Colin would drive. And we optimized that for yeah. two hours. And we go, okay, let's put suspension two on the car. Type in a computer, boom, suspension two on the car, and he'd drive that for two hours. Then body this with suspension this with engine this, da, 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 around for three days, coming up with all the different combinations of what we wanted. And then we said, okay, now we have the car that we think is the best in the simulator. Now we went and built that car. That car only existed virtually. <coughs> and then we went and actually built that car did the frame, did the suspension, built the molds, built the body. And then we went testing. 
We rented Road America four times, two, three days each, private test. I don't know, Road America is very expensive, but yeah, anyway. it is very pricey. Yeah, yeah. So, so it was just 12 us. 12 days. 12 days. Of private testing. Of private testing, plus three days at Putnam Park before that to shake it down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was the budget for this? <laughs> there wasn't one. Right. Yeah, yeah no, no, yeah, there wasn't that's one. clear. <laughs> yeah. You've made that very clear. No. So, so the lap time to beat, lap time that you wanted to eclipse was a two-minute mm -hmm. flat. And the average guy was doing 202s? Is that, is that what you were saying? 202s. Well, okay. the, the top two guys were 202s, and the rest of the pack was 204s. So what did <laughs> what did Colin do in the car? His best lap was a 152.8. <laughs> would have put him, that year, would have put him four tenths off the Muscle Milk P1 car and ahead of the Dyson P1 car. No way. Yep. I believe this. Oh, my God. And ahead of all the P2s. And, I mean, he would have literally qualified second for the IMSA race, four tenths off the Muscle Milk car. And wow. Plus, gruff. Yeah. <laughs> so... But uh, to me, the, the, did Scott win? Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> there's an okay. I mean, so no, no. Colin, yes. So Colin's Move doing on. all this testing. And to get to that point, yeah. we blew up a lot of motors. Sure. And we had to figure out how, to not what do level of horsepower yeah. we could run and how long. And we only needed to make it last 13 laps. And it was definitely 13 laps. We had only completed, with Colin driving, one successful 13-lap run in those oh. 12 days of testing. Okay. We worked out the. You and know, could you swap? I don't know the SEC rules. Could you swap out between practices and? Oh yeah. Stuff? Oh yeah. 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 Okay. I'm right. assuming if you're allowed to build your own. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everything. Well, I'm just saying they, right. it's, it's hard to regulate CFD time. <laughs> right. At we SECA had club. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but it's when you're physically on site, it's easier to see if somebody's swapping out an engine. Right. Well, we had, and of course we built the. the we built two of these cars. Of course you yeah. did. I knew yeah, that yeah, was yeah, coming. Yeah, yeah. So we had what we called the mule. <laughs> we had what we called the mule, which uh, was the test car. Yeah. And then we had what became known as the Bronco, which was going to be the, the lightweight race car. That's the one. So we had both of those. So we had a backup car. And you don't, in SCCA, you don't even have to have use the same car. You could qualify on one car and race uh, swap yeah, the other yeah. car. Yeah. Okay. So we had that backed up. And we had four more turbo motors amongst and plus one in each car. So we had six of these turbo motors lined up if we needed them. And so we'd only done one 13-lap run, but we had figured out the, you know, we'd taken our 13 laps, added up the total time, taken the 13 laps from the fastest D-Sports racer runoffs ever at, the, at Road America, added that up, and Colin would win by nearly two laps, about 1.7 laps <laughs> in 13 laps. <laughs> So we're like, okay. <laughs> Job well done, guys. We're good. <laughs> we're good. Was there any hesitation? Uh, was like, eh, maybe this is a little too far. Like no. no one ever, at no point, no one went, um. No, no. <laughs> this is the D-Sports Racer Project, right? <laughs> right. Did I walk into the wrong meeting? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So we, on the, literally the last day of our testing, Scott Tucker flew up. He had never s driven the car. <laughs> <laughs> he flew up to Road America. And Colin, that's when he had run his 151.8 yeah. or whatever it was sure. that he had done. And Going for the champ car pole. Yeah. Oh, we also hold the out-and-out -out lap record at Calabogie. I forgot. We did three days at Calabogie. Wow. Canada, Canada. Yeah, that is a out crazy and out track. lap record. I no, believe that. Nobody, yeah. the, nothing's yeah. ever gone faster yeah. around there. Larry no. Holt even called and said, hey, the Ford GT was up there, and Colin's still four seconds oh, faster than oh, that. Oh, yeah, no question. Yeah, but now we know how fast the uh, Ford GT goes around there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... So anyway, um, Scott gets in the car, goes out, does like four laps, comes in, and he is, and remember, this is a current LMP2 driver, and yeah. been to Lamar. So, right. I mean, okay, he's and, not a... He's, and he picked it up a lot. He got really good in a P2 car for a guy that doesn't do it for a living. Yes. He got to be very fast. Yes. So he's one of the better silver drivers, uh, sure. true gentleman silver drivers yeah, sure. in the world at the time. He gets in this car, does four laps, comes in and goes... <sighs> Goes, he did like a 58 or something like that, a 158. Says, whew, I'm good. That thing is too scary. Um, that's it. I'm happy. I'm going home. It's good. I understand what I got. That's good. I'm not, I don't want to go any faster than that <laughs> car. It's just done. Yeah. So, so that ends. We come back for the runoffs. 
and he qualifies at a like a 50 eight six or something like that maybe a low 58 yeah. or something like that everybody's like whoa you know like four seconds faster than everybody else yeah, right. amazing amazing start out the race and to really get the official um two minute thing to it get had to happen in the race to right. get the wendy's certificate or whatever it was yeah. yeah you had to do it in the race so it starts misting at the start of the race oh, oh no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and so the first lap he we come up the hill and he gasses it. And there's a picture of him going into turn one. And he must have a 30 car length lead <laughs> <Yeah>. already. <laughs> well, <laughs> all he had to do is gas it. Yeah. And he, uh, like his second lap, he ran a 58 2 or something like that. Job well done. Now we got to do 11 more laps or sure. whatever it <laughs> yeah. was. And he goes around and around and around. I think he lapped everybody except second and third. And we, it lasted 13 laps and we won. <laughs> I'm shocked. That car. <laughs> That car would really. Do. He did it. He did it. He managed to pull it off. <laughs> he pulled it off. Yeah. yeah. Got finally, his medal. Finally wow. won the runoffs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got his medal. <laughs> and we. So that car. Some statistics on that thing. That thing was 189 miles an hour into turn one, into oh. turn five, and into turn into Canada corner. I was just there. To that's w- scary in a car like that. I was just there yeah. in our TLX GT3 car. And yeah. that's quite a bit faster than we're going, and we're one of the fastest cars in a straight line. Yeah. That a, is cranking. That's scary. A P2 yeah. car is 168. Right. Yeah. Those yeah. And we were 189. <laughs> in a tube frame car. It's not a yeah. carbon tub. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A tube yeah. frame exactly. car that weighs 900 pounds. Yeah. The thing would go, we obviously had our LMP2 data for that. Yeah. From, you'll appreciate this, Ryan, from turn eight, it's flat. I literally flat from eight to Canada. Corner. I was wondering that if it was yeah. flat to the carousel. Oh, yeah. you could just mat it the whole way. Min yeah. corner speed in the kink, 172. Oh, God, that's so fast. That's that higher so than the fast. top speed of a P2 car. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That is, a, the, the, is there in car of this thing? Yes. Like, I would love to see that, that video of Colin wringing the neck out of the thing because uh, that's. It might be actually on my Facebook page. Got to cool. look for it. I yeah. think that video might still be there on my Facebook page. I don't know if you can legally answer that, but where is that car now? I was just going to say that. So that car has now been sold to somebody in Australia. Huh. I, I don't know what they're doing with it. It's been destroyed. I yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you <laughs> couldn't run that car. Property, but. So we show up at the... I'm, yeah, this is even makes it worse. <laughs> <laughs> we show up on the grid, and it was this kind of misty kind yeah. of thing. So we show up, at, you know how the grid at Road America works or at that false grid kind yep. of on the end of the pits there. So yep. we're up on the grid and I'm standing in front of the car with my headset on to be able to talk to the guys Yeah. and the other people start filing in and it's, well, you're you know, probably the easiest team to find because you're the teams with the headsets. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Radios. So, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe even umbrellas at this <laughs> yeah, point. Exactly. <laughs> so pit, our cars, were there tire models up on the, our cars up on the jacks <laughs> <All right. laughs> with no tires on it. To the side, because the rule said that you can't have tire warmers on the grid. At the Yeah, at the <laughs> SCCA Nationals. So I'm like, well, there's that chain link fence. That's not the grid. There's the rule about 10 feet over there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so we had three Honda, gener- Honda generators. There you go. With three sets of tires in the tire warmer blankets, a set of reins, a set of intermediates, and a set of dries. Yes. Do they have intermediates for the... At the SCCA now? For these back We did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have. <laughs> we did. <laughs> so we had all three sets all three, sitting yeah, there. Because you just never can be too prepared. <laughs> Things up on jacks. The Shane, the engine guy, is plugged in to the car. Colin Mason, our data guy, is plugged into the car. So you couldn't start it without the computers plugged in. Which but. is a D-Sports racer thing. Yeah. Right, so that a wife and his, a guy and his wife could go could yeah. put it in their trailer right. and take it out and go run. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. You literally couldn't start it, and you can't shut it down. That's even harder to shut it down because you got to, if you just shut it off, the, it, it, the engine it's is Just making too much power, just blow The turbo something. bearings freeze and, yeah. the, and the something else melts, and I don't remember. But you, so you have to shut the turbo down at the right speed. You have to circulate the water pump and pulse the water pump the correct way we had electric water pump that was controlled by the computer and you had to pulse it the right way and shut this thing down after about it's about a five minute process to shut the engine off so anyway so we have all these guys (laughs) (laughs) we have all these guys plugged into it and we have all of our mechanics and 
they're all sitting there ready and we had practiced the tire change over the fence before in the shop, you know, and how we were yeah. going to do this. Yeah, of course you do. 13 and, lap race. And yeah. we're timing, you know, the five minute gun, the three minute gun. And at the two minute gun, you have to clear the grid. So at two minutes, we have to be done. So we had timed it so that the last brrr, poof, happens at, with two minutes and one second to go. And then we jump away. This is for the SCCA runoffs, runoffs. where a guy's probably looking at his phone and going, yeah, you got about a minute, guys. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's yeah. that's the official timing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so all these other guys pull up with their, you know, the guy drives up with his balaclava on and his helmet sitting on the side pod and his wife comes up and gives him a kiss and they get in and they get ready <laughs> to go. And that's all these guys lined up behind us. And here we are. And I'm looking at this thing going, this is not what this should be about <laughs> this is not at all you think right <laughs> i like that it got to that point like, right. that's the moment <laughs> right i'm like how many months like, into this is how many months did you start building this car ahead it was an eight month program right so like eight when, months in because like when you commissioned computer 43 <laughs> right right you didn't think maybe we've gone too far with no this. because because this was when somebody like scott tucker yeah. gives you a job Free and rain. says, go do this. Yeah. I want to do this. You do it 100% the best of your ability. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. 100% agree. And well, we all did that. And then we got there. And, and I've been to the runoffs. I know what that's all about. And I'm, so I'm sitting there. I got it. But then it dawned on me that this was not, <laughs> at, that we had done a good job, but this was but not. Yeah, you fair. did. This right. was not. And there were some of the D-Sports Racer competitors were, I thought this was pretty cool. Some Thank of those you. guys were genuinely mad. Oh yeah, yeah, no question. <laughs> this is this is all ruining they do. our whole yeah. season. This is their two weekends yeah. of vacation they get for the year. And out of the twenty guys in that class, that five of them were mad. Twenty, twenty cars. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> five of them were mad. I'm surprised it was only five. five and fifteen five. of them thought it was the most awesome thing they'd ever seen. Right. Yeah. It's like those whoa, are the fifteen who knew they weren't going to win. So what right. do they care? The, they yeah, were yeah. probably the guys that before Scott got there were finishing, you know, fifth through last. Yeah, right. yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. <laughs> so anyway, we start the thing and it's boom, go. We tire warmers off, <laughs> choreograph the whole thing, and I count. I count and I'm counting twelve guys on our team, plus Scott in the car, me thirteen. Our team manager, David Stone, and our crew chief, Ken Swan, who don't count. So there's like 15 of us. Right. And there's... For a D-Sports race. The next biggest team has like two. Yeah. Sure. Two guys and the guy in the car. You know, a wife and his buddy and the guy, the driver. And so we drop the car, start up, go, and we win. Right. And <laughs> we finish 13 laps, and it's all good. And then the car goes to Australia. And I have no idea... You could not run that car. Right. It's not a car that you can just have in your garage and be like, we're going to go do the, the yeah. weekend at Bathurst. No. Like, yeah. It's not an option. No. Yeah. And everybody was like, oh, this is going to ruin the class. And uh, now everybody's going to have to have one of these cars. And I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody could have one of these cars. That's adorable, It's impossible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So was that just the culture of level five? Yes. Just like, go, make it happen. I. I know that we're way over time here. That's fine. But I don't care. Yeah, cause this cause is a awesome. two-parter for yeah. me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've heard the similar story, not necessarily the result side of it. Well, I, there is a funny result side story, but I want to hear your version of it. Wasn't there a 996 cup car that was also built? And it, I, I was told it was like the million-dollar cup car. So that was a parallel program. <laughs> so there's two at once. <laughs> We had 88 CFD computers right, no, running no, at no. once. No, <laughs> this one actually took, it started in 2011, and we called it the Hurricane. It was a Porsche cup car. Well, it was a Porsche. Right. It was a four-wheel drive Porsche. Okay. And I don't remember. There's a number for it. I can't remember all these Porsche numbers. But anyway, it was a, it's that was to win the runoffs, too. I think it was a 996, right? Because they had right. a GTS 911, which right. was all-wheel drive. Right. So it was a 996 with... A four-wheel drive, and we were going to try to win, I don't remember the class. It wasn't GT3 because that's a cup car. Right. It was an SCCA class that fit into Sure, it. sure. Right. SP something. Right. So at the th in 2011, we ran the Hurricane in that class, and we ran a Ferrari Challenge car heavily modified in another class, T1 or something they had a, a class for I like that, that you cl clarified that it was heavily modified. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it was like... <laughs> In case, we, in case we didn't think it was. <laughs> the damper program was out the wazoo. I mean, it was like... 
Penske's. We had PFC brakes on it. We had Derek Dong. We did full brake development. This is on the Ferrari. Ferrari. That was just a minor program. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's pathetic. <laughs> but on the Hurricane, so it was four-wheel drive. This turbo motor made I don't know how much horsepower. Pat Long came. He was that's our driver. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So well, of course, you're going to get a factory Porsche driver. That's what we wanted. Got to have. Yeah. We figured that's what we wanted. <laughs> <laughs> So we got Pat to come and drive, and Pat just, and oh, and it's on a street tire. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, Pat. For budget. <laughs> no, for that's the, the rule. By the rule. By yeah. the rules. Yeah. Right. No, I oh, right. For the budget yeah. of the. Yeah, the series of the said street tires. Of the mom and pop So that guy we can be right cost car. efficient <laughs> here at SCCA <laughs> Club. <laughs> I know it made over 750 horsepower on the chassis dyno at level five. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a four-wheel drive chassis dyno, so we could. So you had to go get that, right? No, we... You already had one? It was... Yeah, the team bought... When they we bought a chassis dyno, we bought a four-wheel drive one because... No, you never know. We well, never and know. just in case, you probably had to buy two. It came in... No, we only had one. Oh, cheap. Yeah. <laughs> no. Cheap bastards. And so we... So we developed that car. That car had some really cool dampers on it. It had G-valves. You'll appreciate this. So it had a... From... Multimatic and dynamic. Picture a damper that you can change the valving based on the G forces. So the car goes on the brakes. Right. Porsches are really bad for diving on yep. the brakes, right? And then the rear coming up being loose and sure. real unstable getting in. So we use these G valves, is what they're called, on these really trick dampers where picture a pendulum. Mm hmm. And a hole here, and a hole here where fluid can go through. Right. So when the pendulum's sitting here, your rebound circuit, the, the, the fluid's flowing just around this pendulum, and the rebound is normal, whatever you have your normal setting for. Right. When you put the brakes on, the pendulum goes forward, plugs up one of the holes, and now your rebound valving goes higher because the bleed hole is plugged up. Sure. So you put that on the rear <coughs> for rebound. Right. So when the g-forces come in it holds the rear down you put it on the front on the bump circuit so when the g-forces come in it, it stiffens it the bump yep. but once you get off once the g-forces the braking forces reduce and you're in the middle of the corner now you have your nice soft shocks back again so mm -hmm. you don't have this really stiff rear rebound and really stiff front bump so, so it's sort of like a mechanically designed active yes yeah exactly. is, is this similar to an inerter didn't they have those in they outlawed them i think in either was it still Grand Am, or it might have just been oh, into the first Yeah, it's they're outlawed. It's a different... Th the Nerders completely different. Okay. The Nerders, we did run on the D-Sports racer. <laughs> that was... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a Formula One kind of thing. And mm -hmm. the Nerders are pretty cool. You mm -hmm. run them as a third element. We we ran six shocks on the D-Sports racer. And yeah, six. Yeah. Six. Yeah. Six. Six. Yeah. six. Well, there's that probably no rule for that. One so. for each corner, yeah. and then the... The well, you do the center in the many. middle. Yeah, yeah, you gotta have them. I'm surprised it was that few. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That prob I'm thinking about that. That was pretty cool. So anyway, the the hurricane. We. Yeah, Pat Long was like this is the most ridiculous Porsche he's ever driven, and he's <laughs> driven just about <laughs> right, every, right. every Porsche there was. So we, we did win the runoffs that year with that car and with the Ferrari Challenge modified car. Then the next year we came back with the D Sports Racer and the. Rated Hurricane, right, which had bigger intercoolers and I can't remember what else we did to that. And we had um, did a so that was kind of a parallel program along with the D Sports Racer. Did he win it the second year? Because I heard he lost one of them to he a did Viper. not win. He lost in so we also raced GT3 the second. Mm -hmm. No, we raced T1 again with a Ferrari Challenge car. And that's where we lost to a Viper. Okay. On the yeah. last lap going right. into Canada corner, yeah. the Viper got him. Yeah. The Hurricane, the second year, got a flat tire. We pitted and that's did, it, yeah. you don't win a race Still like that. Still finished second, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I think that's how that, that all turned out. From a engineering standpoint, that has to be the one of the most fun programs you've ever been on because the the you know you're going to find something. You only had to find two seconds. You guys found like 12 or something right. ridiculous. And, or sorry, eight. Right. <laughs> only Come eight on. at Road right. America. Please. Yeah. Not giving too much credit. And 
there's I mean the pressure's not really there because you know you're gonna you're gonna figure something out even if you only found three seconds that'd be a huge win for him right and the reality is that Colin probably could have gotten the west as it was and done a 59 I probably yeah probably because the guys he's racing against are like the best guys at that time were guys who race IMSA lights now right not kids either right. they're older guys yeah, so sure yeah right. he probably could have so really it's like okay let's see how far we can take this since budget's no 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 problem and we're all pretty sharp at what we do that's why we have this job right so it had to be like even though it wasn't a serious thing like you're not you know it's not daytona 24 hour or anything like that but because you can now be creative and push yourself into places that you can't in other series because i'm sh no no way they'd say yeah do whatever you want like the tire warmer thing i can't believe somebody didn't walk over and be like really come right. on yeah <laughs> well, well it's not on the track yeah like, right no <laughs> no <laughs> well and that's the thing when we called up Mark Hanford worked for Multimatic, and so when I called, we called Mark and said, hey, we got this D-Sports racer, and we want <laughs> you to be involved. <laughs> and he said, what's like, a D-Sports uh, racer? Yeah, I know. <laughs> right. And he's that. like, uh, you know, he was like, oh, I don't really, yeah, yeah, I, I don't, don't think I'm so. Not. Then I said, let me, Mark, let me send you the rule book. <laughs> 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 and so I sent him the rule book, which is literally one and a half pages. That's it. That's the whole rule book. And I said, God. And he called me back up, and he goes, "Such a playground." Okay, uh, I think your PDF got truncated. I only got a page and a half of the rules. I said, "That's, <laughs> that's the rules." This, this is why I called you. He right. goes, "Really? We can build a car based on these rules?" He said, "Heck yeah, I'm in." He said, "I haven't <laughs> done anything like this in 20 years. There's right. no class like this that exists today in motorsports." And so that's what got everybody charged up. Yeah. The engine guys, the the vehicle dynamics guys, the simulation guys, the Mark Hanford, the aero guy. I mean, they, they were just thrilled to be able to do a project like this. So was I. And I mean, that in all the projects I've done, that's probably the most, the least known, but the coolest thing I've ever done. Right. And and the way, like, like you said, Sean, of the, the culture at level five. Yeah. It wasn't. A lot of people think it was this. Oh, just spend millions of dollars on everything and just beat them that way. That wasn't the way it went. It was, we're going to do everything we can within the rules, not cut any corners, invent new ways of doing things better that nobody else has. And yeah, that costs money. Right. But it wasn't like it went from, here's a lot of money, let's try to win. It right. was like, how do we win? Oh, that costs a lot of money? Okay, we'll spend that. Right, right. You know, so it wasn't, it, the <coughs> culture there was never any small detail that could be better was overlooked. Right. It's not uncommon for guys who, and I have to be, I have to be fair, I don't know how deep Scott's history went before sort of level five really good. I mean, I, I met him a couple times when he drove for TRG and whatnot, but um, it's not uncommon for a guy who's fairly new to motorsports and has the means to really spend big to come in and say, I want to do it bigger and better, and I'm willing to dump what I can into it, and let's be new. And then he gets the first bill and goes, whoa, <laughs> whoa, yeah. I didn't mean that big. Right. <laughs> but you had 44 computers running at once. Did he ever step up and go, um... Mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wow. I mean, it, and it was, it, the key to it was, is that we were getting the results on every right. program that he wanted. If we weren't getting the results that he wanted, sure. and he didn't, wasn't naive enough to think we should win every race and right. all of that, but, but if we weren't getting the results that he wanted, there would have been hell to pay. Yeah, yeah. But <coughs> we had a really good team of guys. I mean, there were, I don't know. I'm going to say at any one time, there were probably 40 of us all together. At when we were but that's for the whole program, all the right, rear everything rear going on. Yeah. And, and when we were running more cars, there, we probably peaked at 50. Like at Road America one year, we ran an LMP2 car. We ran two LMP2 cars, an IMSA Lights car, a Porsche Cup car, a Ferrari, oh, the Trans Am was with us that weekend. We ran a Fran Ferrari Trans Am car in G Trans Am 2 or whatever they had. We right. ran five cars that weekend. God. And and that's right. just kind of well, what we did. 
and I mean, even just the presentation of that team, you would walk by and they'd have, you know, glass partition or, or Lex Amplex, you know, where everything looked like a museum just mm-hmm. looked like. And, you know, the lazy in me being a useless PR guy would, would see them go, oh, that looks like whoa, a lot of work to set up. <laughs> Thank God I'm not there. It um, was horrible to set up. Yeah. It was, you had to have a forklift, so we had to have a truck. <laughs> 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 all the equipment in it and a forklift. And a forklift. In it. Yeah. 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 You just get one somewhere. Yeah. Well, it was cool, though. No doubt. And so that's that was, you know, kind of back to those kind of guys. A lot of people, most of the people, I think, that didn't like Level 5, a lot of it was jealousy. They were like, wow, that would yeah. be cool. All of our mechanic friends and, and engineer friends and everything all would love yeah, to like, work oh, there. Yeah, like, oh, screw you guys. Here's a resume. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They all wanted to work there. And the cool thing about it was we had a great group of people. I mean, yeah. it worked really well together. David Stone, who just passed away not long ago, yeah. Yeah. was a guy who his his best thing was able to put the right people together. And then he pretty much got out of the way. Right. You know, it was a guy by the name of Ken Swan and myself – and a few, uh, uh, you know, our top crew chief guy, and and we pretty much got to do what we did. If we could justify it to David, Scott would buy into it. Right, and that was that. And as long as we got the results, you know, and it, again, it was one of those scary programs, a lot like Team Scandia. Yeah. If we didn't win yeah. five championships or four championships in a row and four Sebrings and four Petit Le Mans and – you know, we were all a little nervous. We went to Lama for our first time and only finished third. We're like, oh, oh. <laughs> right. Podiums. Heads will roll. <laughs> right. We, <laughs> we didn't win. This yeah. is not good. Right. Yeah. And so, I mean, there were things like he just did what every race team wishes they could do. Yeah. We absolutely. bought our Lola LMP2 cars, three of them, went to Sebring, ran them there. They seemed pretty good. Went to another race. Ooh, not, not what we needed. Went to Spa uh, and Imola. Whew, these cars aren't competitive against the HPDs and the current yeah. Oricas. Ooh, bad. Hmm. Okay, middle of the season. Dump those. Let's buy two Acuras. Two, or actually Hondas, yeah, HPDs. HPDs yeah. Let's buy two HPDs in the middle of the season. Yeah. Bought two HPDs and switched. So we bought five LMP2 cars in one year. I and remember that. Scrapped three of them. Right. Well, scrapped. Put them in yeah. the side. Yeah. And it wasn't be. It was only because he wanted to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, that was a better way to win. <laughs> How was Scott to work with? Great. Was he? Great. He was, again, a lot like Andy Evans, for me anyway. Again, yeah. to me personally, you know, when you make your living doing this, the first thing you want to do is get paid and paid on time. Right? Yep. That was never a question. Awesome. You want to be able to have the ability to do things what you think is the right way. And I could do, you know, if I decided that we needed 45 computers on the CFD thing, we'd have 45. Right. Yeah. If, you know, whatever whatever we needed. And put together the right people, never micromanaged. You know, I want to understand it. He's really smart. Again, like Andy Evans, smart, just one of those incredibly smart guys that you can go, yeah, okay, I can see why these guys are successful. Why they do it, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. But smart enough not to think that because they're a really good businessman, they should know how to r- run a race team. Yeah, that where is their limitations the are. most key thing I've heard in a while because very often I come up against guys that have either come into some money or built a little bit of a business up and, and done okay for themselves that then think, I'm going to start a race team, and because I'm successful at business, whatever it may be, mm-hmm. I'll be successful at this too. And it's just not their element. It's not their game. And then they fail or, you know, right. you know, lose a lot of money or whatever it is. Yeah. Well, and, the, and the flip side of that is I think a lot of people come in realizing they have to sort of put the right people in charge, but maybe they don't put the right people in charge. Yeah, right. And so that sort of being a good judge of character and knowing who's BSing you and who actually knows their stuff and having the wherewithal to, to dig deep enough into their into their background and say, okay, this really is my guy. Right. You know. And that's but, what he could do. And Scott... There were times when I first started working there, and we were building this team. Right. I mean, we started out, uh, it had been a Ferrari Challenge team, and then 
when he started to do his o decided to do his own team, it was when we did LMPC in 2010, right. which was the first year at LMPC. And that's when we really started building the team that turned out to be the level five right. team for the next five, mm -hmm. four years. When he first started out, I didn't know how he operated. And there was like, uh, I remember one time going to Scott and saying, Scott, you know, that guy we have in whatever position, he's really not a top guy. He's good, but we can get this other guy. And he's the top guy. He's the crew chief or whatever we need to sure. really run this car. It's got to be like, look, I remember he told me, he goes, Jeff, I have a real job. I have a normal job that I do. I don't want another business. I don't want a race team. I want to race. I want to drive. I want to win races. That's why David Stone works for me. You and David work that out. Right. I don't want to awesome. know. Yeah. yeah. That's the best way I'm to I'm going to come it. here and I'm <coughs> going to drive my cars, but... I don't need another business. I have right. however many I have. I have six of them already this or whatever. Is, this is his vacation. Right. Yeah, yeah this is his time to relax, right. not time to work again. Yeah. So he was a great, again, for me personally, a great guy to work for. And I, you know, a lot of people's, you know, oh, he's a criminal and all of that. I, you know, to me, again, other people may disagree, but nothing he was doing in business was illegal yep. until... January of 14, when yep. the uh, Federal Trade Commission Changed made it illegal, yeah. and that's when he stopped, and that's when he shut down his his uh, race team. Right. So on that on that point, we've all seen how quickly race teams can go away. You think you've got a job, and literally the next day they're padlocked. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there had been a few years where Scott had had been under some fire uh, from different governments and whatnot on, yep. on his business practices. You guys had to keep an eye on that because you had to have that in the back of your mind. This could go away tomorrow. What did that change the atmosphere at all? Mm. I would say, you know, we we'd see the reports, right? And then you'd hear, you know, something bad would come down. Oh, the FTC or the whatever the Federal, Federal Trade Commission, Commission yeah, is yeah. investigating Scott. Yep. I'm like, ooh, that can't be good. Nope. Right. And then you'd see, then you'd see, okay, David Stone, uh, the shop was in Wisconsin. Yeah. Scott lived in Kansas. Then you'd see, hey, you know, because I'm in constant contact with David all the time. Hey, I'm flying to Kansas. Fly to Kansas, come back. Okay, we're still racing. Right. Right. And that's it's what all it that matters. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. 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 We're still racing. And it was never, you know, and that happened couple three times and then we just stopped worrying about it yeah 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 you know we're you just can't right and it might we knew like you do with every team like that with a successful business owner they're they're not going to do that i mean dyson is a rarity to do it for 25 or 30 years or whatever yeah. they're doing it you know you get guys really good guys like um uh, Bob Stallings. Right. Yep. You can't. They're not going to do that forever. And yep. nobody in racing thinks that. Oh, I'm going to be at level five for 20 years. Right. No. But you go, man. This is a group of guys getting to do things like this D Sports Racer Project or LMP2 and go to Le Mans and do all the things we did. And you just ride that wave because this is so awesome that even if it did end tomorrow, the past is so awesome that you'll figure something else out. Right. Right. Meow. So there you have it, the special edition <laughs> Level 5 stories. There is simply no way to do that story justice secondhand. That has to come from Jeff Brown's mouth, kind of explaining that whole scenario. So we just can't give Jeff Brown enough credit for the entirety of that dinner because he was so candid and so funny and just gave us so much to work with. Anyway, so closing out this very special Level 5 edition, we want to introduce you to a band called the Agrolites. And uh, they are also available on iTunes. Once again, that is AgroLights. And uh, we've got a song called Well Runs Dry. Enjoy. Resolve.